As always, Leroy is in the studio, and I'm sure, Leroy, you're looking forward to hearing from lots of people today. I certainly am, and Arsenal fans, you must be buzzing. Eight nights out of win. Come on, can you win the league? Liverpool fan Jurgen Klopp says you cannot win the league. Just what has gone wrong at Anfield and Newcastle? We were talking about the top six, but is it now the top seven? Get in touch using the hashtag PLFans. There is only one place to start today, and it has to be at the Emirates, Tim. Uh, last season, Liverpool finished 23 points above Liverpool. We've just seen the league table there. Uh, already Liverpool 14 points behind, albeit they've got a game in hand, and Arsenal came out on top at the weekend as well. Yeah, impossible for Liverpool to win the league. You know, Done. I'd go with that early. I mean, with, with the quality of what's ahead of them, and I'm talking about Man City. Obviously, Arsenal have done brilliantly to be above Man City at the moment, but you, we're just waiting, aren't we, for it to go wrong? <laughs> Everyone keeps saying that. Everyone keeps saying that. You, <laughs> you they're, must they're, be impressed, though, with what, no, the job out, that Mikel Arteta's seriously, done. Seriously, they've been outstanding. They've been great. Um, gradually improved. I think Saliba coming back in after a couple of lo uh, loan spells in France. Um, obviously, Zinchenko coming in, he didn't play at the weekend, but he's been outstanding. And Jesus has been the icing on the cake from someone who puts the ball in the back of the net. And you've still got the young lads who have been outstanding, mm -hmm. like Saka and Martin lelli has been great. Odegaard's outstanding in that 10 area as well. So you've got a young team there, a very young team, and you've got a very young manager, and they're all singing from the same hymn sheet. They're driving forward, and I think they look fantastic. It's not only the... It, I, two big wins they've had in North London Derby. I know how emotional that game is. It's more than three points. It's the manner of how they went about it. And then they get Liverpool, yeah. even though they're having a bad time at the moment, coming to the Emirates and they win the football match. It's, it's massive for Arsenal at the moment. They've done brilliantly. Gives them a lot of confidence, doesn't it, going forward this season. If we look at the teams that the two managers selected, I guess Arsenal have been pretty settled all season. Mm. Tommy Asu came in on the left-hand side. You said Zinchenko uh, not available uh, Tierney would have been probably the obvious choice to yeah. many. But Tommy Asu got the nod on the left-hand side. Uh, someone made a good point to me saying Salah on the right, who he's up against, likes to come in on his left. Tommy Asu, a right-sided defender, yeah. was able to deal with that. But that was the only real surprise, I guess, from Mikel Arteta's side. Yeah, I mean, Mikel's going with four centre-backs across the back, isn't he, at the moment, really? I mean, yeah. You could pretty much say, I mean, obviously, Ben White plays there. Tommy Asu's played a lot of his football at centre. They're big boys. You know, they're very physical, big yeah. lads. Um, and party has been great, you know, in the midfield area. And Jack has got a new lease of life. He's playing a more advanced role. He's going to support. He's all about energy. He's about 100 mile an hour, mm -hmm. getting involved in every bit of the play, leading by an example. The kid's done outstanding. And, and the, the forward players, I think it picks itself at the moment. They're all staying fit. And I think Odegaard, Saka, Jesus and Martinelli will pick itself at the mm -hmm. moment. Liverpool's slightly different yeah. uh, because they're struggling. Jurgen Klopp has decided to change his format, alter his formation, mm -hmm. should we say, because generally he's been a 4-3-3 man, hasn't he, since he's arrived at the club. 4-2-3-1 against Rangers in yeah. the Champions League. It worked for them and they were impressive in that game. And he kept the same formation against Arsenal as well. Two holding players in Henderson and Thiago uh, and Darwin Nunez got the nod from the start. Yeah, and with respect to Glasgow Rangers and not the quality of, of Arsenal Football Club and certainly the way they're playing at the moment. So, you know, to play with the four attacking players, I think it was a probably a, um, a too much of a risk to mm -hmm. play. I, for me, I mean, it's easy on hindsight, I know that. Fabino, for me, would have played in the midfield. I think they yeah. should have played three in midfield and three up front. That's the way they've always gone about it. That's where they've got their success. But, you know, Jürgen's having a bad time of it. His team's having a bad time. They're lacking a little bit of confidence and he's tinkering. And, and that's what you do as a manager. If you can't find the solution, you just keep changing it. They're also having bad starts to matches. It's happening time and time again. And it was no different this weekend, was it, against Arsenal? We, we look at it right from the off. This is kickoff. Liverpool have the kickoff, goes back. They look to play forward. Win the ball, recycle it, goes back to the goalkeeper. And I think we'll, we'll get a, a first look, really, at, at Liverpool's shape. If we just pause it there, if I just stop it there, and we'll look at that, and we've got the back four in place. This is the back four. Two fullbacks looking to get forward, as they do so often. You're two holding midfield players. So there's Thiago and Henderson. That's what we talked about. Just two rather than three. And you should say that we're, they're up against a three-man midfield. So already they're a little bit outnumbered in the middle of the pitch, Liverpool. And this is probably what Jurgen Klopp was after in this formation. Four against three at the top end of the pitch. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Absolutely. But the, I'll ask, he would have expected more respect from Arsenal. 
maybe for the midfield players, Partey and Xhaka, to drop a little bit deeper. To protect, they, to protect in here. But they didn't. What they do is they shuffle across the pitch, they cloak, make the pitch very, very small, and they leave the far one so they can have the switch of play. And you'll see that as it evolves during the game. Play it on. Play across the back. Back to the goalkeeper. I think if, if you're going to play this way and, and you're going to play with four up top, what is the ball that gets you out? It's the long ball, isn't it? Yeah. It's the long ball you could, because you're going to have to bypass the middle of the pitch, especially if you've got two against three in there, and especially if this is your shape now. Look, if I, if I just show there, mm. look at all that space in there without a Liverpool player. Yeah. Because they've got the four at the top end of the pitch, two Arsenal players are controlling the middle of the pitch without anyone up against them. Yeah, what you, what you need to do there, you need to hook them a little bit better. I never felt like they were in control there as they were passing this ball out very early in the no. game. And Xhaka and Partey are just no interest, no interest in, in pushing forward here. What you need to do, you need to lure them into this area. Then you play over the top, and then you've got the four against three. Play it on. I think eventually they do try and play long, don't they? I mean, it... This touch is poor. I mean, that doesn't help when you... it's untidy. And, and Ben White smells it. He's straight in there. Yeah, this they... is real pressure, I, where he puts on I, th I think that's a really good point. And you made the point about the, how they shuffle across and leave the far yeah. man. This exactly highlights it. If you See it watch Ben White... He really goes here, doesn't he? Play it. I'll play that on. And as they do, so he gets there. His first touch isn't a good one, but now he's forced him. And the back three have come across and they've left Mo Salah on that far side. Yeah. Because the back three have now, sh have now shoved across it. It's still three against four yeah. at the back. It's still brave. There's the protection, though. You've still got the two protect him. Ball goes to Allison. Clears it forward. Now then, if I just play this on slowly here and then pause it, because this is what they're after. If, this, if that touch is right, yeah. if that touch is right, they're in. Yeah. They're in on goal, and that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Invite Arsenal onto them. Can they play long? Can they get the second balls, and can they win that one? Play it on. It doesn't. Now then, they've got a problem. Two holding midfield players rather than three. I was just going to... But they're still good. They're still, in a good. they're still in decent shape. This is Henderson and, and Thiago. Yeah. I would say Thiago probably doesn't need to go chasing after this as much as he does. Mm. I think he's probably thinking, I'm in a three, it's fine. I've got people around me, I'll be OK. I actually think he probably goes a little early, if I'm honest. And he gets bypassed and doesn't go with his runner. So this was his man. And all of a sudden now, he's five yards off him. That's who he went to close down, and now he's five yards away. But they're still in reasonable shape, aren't they? You would, you would say they're still getting bodies back behind the ball. Play it on. This is something that Arsenal have done, I think, lots. Now it's starting to overload in wide areas. Four there against, well, two maybe. Henderson, Trent Alexander-Arnold. What do you think of the defending? I think the defending is poor. I think the body shape of, of Trent at the moment. I think he has to track his runner. So he, his body shape needs to be on his way out there. If I play it slowly. That, that's where the danger's going to go. Trent has to I'll make his way out I'll play this slowly. So now what are you after? Now he's lost sight of him. He cannot so see. He's squared his body I'll take it back. I'll out. take this back because I know there's the overload. He has a little glance, actually. If you just have a little look at, at Trent Alexander-Arnold, if you just watch him as I play this on slowly, oh, it's going to... Let's see if I can get it back. There, there is. Just so There's the glance now, doesn't he? He has that little glance and he sees him. He knows exactly where he is. That's his man now. He, he has to stay with him, doesn't he? He has to stay with him. He has to stay Not. with him, but then once he hasn't stayed with him, now, now he can't stay with him. It's impossible because that ball's going to beat him. He has to cut the pass out. He has to close the gap Great between finish. him and Matip and close the pass in line. Inside a minute. This is actually probably a better angle, isn't it, for showing the defending. Keep your eye on Trent now. Now he's looked over his shoulder, he should go now. To, so now to he needs to go. Him. So now he needs to get across and, and deal with that. Yes? I mean, it's a great pass. It's a fantastic pass. And Martinelli, what he does brilliantly, he narrows up. He starts thinking, I can score from this angle. Yep. You know, you can't score if he goes into a wide area. You can score if he narrows it up. He thinks, one minute, surely they're not going to let him pass that ball inside. They need to close this gap up here. Just, just, e just explain to, to people watching about the body position of, of Trent Alexander. Exactly what you mean. We're squared. He, he cannot now see Martinelli. Martinelli would there be behind him. It's impossible to see him. 
He needs to square, invite the ball to go across the so, face of him. So open, it, open his body and face that open it face up. Martinelli. So first and foremost, you close the gap between Matip and you close that pass inside of you. That one yeah. can't come. So you make the ball go across you into Martinelli, then you go and do your defending. But you're still able to get across. What, what he does is defends like this. Martinelli runs and in behind him. By you that can't time, see he him. can't turn either. He can't and get Not only quick that, enough. then he gets the ball played inside him. It's impossible. It's, it's really poor defending. There's so much wrong with this. And he's, he's on the stretch. And inside a minute. Yeah. Arsenal, that's a good finish. Arsenal one up. It's a habit. It's a, it's a habit, isn't it, really, from Liverpool, though, starting games poorly and conceding the first goal. I think it's happened 10 in the last 12 games, something like that with Liverpool. This is the, this is the last kick of the first half for Liverpool. So what's going wrong again? Because ultimately the ball comes in. You've still got, your, you've still got decent shape here. But even if you, if you lose the ball now, you're thinking... Well, we're all right, aren't we? We've got enough bodies back behind the ball. We're in good shape there. No problem at all. And what happens? Mate, we stop it there. I mean, there's, there's different ways to, to stop the counter-attack. You have to lock on early. Once they get their head up, it's far yeah. too late. But we're talking about Thiago here is one of the most ex experienced players on that football yeah. pitch. With the big game situation, he cannot let Jesus go past him there. He has to take him out. He has to foul him to stop the counter-attack. It's one way of stopping a counter-attack. Yeah. And with one minute on the clock before half-time, you have to go in level. Let's play it. Let's play it on. So there he's saying he's got to come down. Take him out. Take him out. And take him out. Get, you're not getting a yellow card because it's, 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 it's a coming together um, and then they're, they're, they're all chasing back. But this is alarming. This group of players here. We, if we highlight Nunez, Nunez here. If, 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 we, if you're talking about intensity from your team... I guess <laughs> Liverpool have just dropped a little, haven't they? We're used to seeing them playing at 100 miles an hour. That Jurgen Klopp described it as heavy metal football. Mm. He wants oh. his teams to play quickly, doesn't he? He wants yeah, them yeah. to play with intensity. But they still do. They still do when they're going towards the opposition goal. <laughs> when they're running back towards their own goal, they don't yeah. want to do that anymore. I okay. think they're too good for that. You so, know, it annoys me watching Liverpool at the moment. So let's this keep, boy runs past let's these keep four an eye players, on him then. including the leader, including the man. The Virgil van Dijk, at the moment, he's not running back with enough urgency and mm -hmm. enough pace. He needs to recover back into there. He's got every right to stay up the field yep. because the numbers they have back at the moment, you think, well, they're fine. But he runs. He's almost the last yep. player forward, the furthest forward. And you watch him get back. Keep, he's nearest so to keep, the... keep an eye on him then, yeah? Watch Darwin Nunez. And by the time it gets to this position here, he's the one closest. It can't to be the right. goal scorer. But that's not tactical. That is a mindset. So right. you, you wouldn't blame it on the system, the 4 2 three, one. No, it's, a, it's about doing your jobs, doing it correctly, running back. They all want to run forward towards uh, the opposition uh, well, goal and uh, get the glory. They need to do the hard shift. Uh, uh, that's what they need to get back to. They always did. They had a diff obviously different personnel in midfield. Now, in hindsight, we could look at Fabinho and say, well, that's what he wants to do. He wants to do that. Yeah. You know, but, and, and maybe, um, obviously, we know about Thiago, he's got more creativity in his, in his feet, want, he wants to keep I, his energy, but you need to put a shift in. I want to highlight another couple of things in terms of Liverpool defending here. So, you talked about Nunez, and here he is actually, top, top of the pitch, he's about to make this run back. I also want to talk about Thiago Silva, who has a little glance, by the way, at this man. Thiago Alcantara, uh, should I say, sorry. He's, he has a little glance, that's his man. Yeah. That's his man. Everyone else is man for man. Everyone else is... is, is Fine, in a decent shape. He sees him, but doesn't go with him. That's his job now. He's got to get back in there. Yeah. He's the nearest to him, and he's the spare man. Yeah. He's got to get close to him. Also, we need to keep an eye on Trent. Well, let's, let's, so let's just watch this until we get into the box. He doesn't do it. Nunez runs past him. Right, now I'm going to take this back very slowly. Because Trent had his man. Yeah. Body shape. Who, who's... One. Yeah, but forget that. Forget body shape. Yep. Forget anything like that. Stay. Where's the danger now? Where's well, the goal? Well, Middle I, of the pitch. So I, I, I'm saying this is the danger. That's the danger. He's got, a, he's got to trust Henderson 1v1, yes? He's got to trust him, but he leaves the danger, man. I mean, he leaves the danger, man. He vacates the middle of the pitch where the goal is to go and help out. So I who, mean, he's only, who, he's who only are we blaming? Meaning right. He means right. He means right to do it, but he's absolutely wrong by doing it. He Shh. needs to be taught that... He needs to protect the goal, and the goal is in the centre of the pitch mm -hmm. where he leaves. If you watch him there, he's going to help out Henderson because he thinks Martinelli's going to be too quick for him and knock it down the line. Yeah. He's OK down the line because what's he going to do when he goes down the line? He's going to cross it into the middle of the box and he's going to score. Mm -hmm. You cannot vacate there. He needs Someone needs to be telling him. So now he's gone. 
Simicast get, should get across and watch or not? Him, where, where does he end up? Watch him now when he chops it back. Watch Trent now. I mean... Where's he gone? And there's the overload. And the, well, we show, saw it for the first goal, the overload. On the left-hand side, up against Trent. Now you've got the overload on this side. Three against one. Play it on. And there's Nunez, who's the deepest man. He's just running 70, 80 yards to get himself back into shape past his whole midfield. I hope, I'm, I'm hoping Trent's saying that's my fault. Sorry, guys. <laughs> He's probably not. He's saying that must be offside. I mean... At the moment, it's not working for him. Mm -hmm. I think he's a fantastic player. I think they need to get back to basics, but not just Trent, all of them. And like I say, I would, as a manager, I look, at, I look to the main man, and the main man is Virgil van Dijk. Yeah. I think he needs to start being a little bit nastier with his teammates and telling them some home truths. Do you think he needs to be around. a little bit more proactive and stay a higher line? As well. well, he loves the high line. But I know he does, but I don't think we're seeing it. I think we're seeing the first goal. He was up, and Matic was back there. Normally, Matic, he's the yeah. general. He says, "I'm coming up here." Everyone but, comes here, and they all come with him. At the moment, he, he seems to have lost this leadership. Yeah. He, the authority what he had seems to be dwindling away in my eyes. They're giving themselves a mountain to climb every single game, yeah. aren't they? Uh, if we look at the first half table, and we talked about them conceding the first goal, 10 out of the last 12 Premier League games, that's what they've done. First half table, Liverpool are bottom, or would be bottom. Uh, play day, just four points, one win, one draw, and six defeats. That's something that can't continue, can it? That. Because no. you're always giving yourselves too much to do in matches. No, of course, the first goal is in any league is is the the most important goal. And when you keep, even if you're as good as Liverpool are, it's like I think they will come back. Yeah, I really do. But at the moment, it looks like there's no signs of it. Yeah, we have to talk, we have to talk about Arsenal absolutely. And, and you know, criticised Liverpool defensively there, and we, 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 we should say Arsenal were brilliant going forward as well. Granite Xhaka. I mean, everyone's talking about a renaissance and the, the, the way he's playing this season. 50 touches this weekend against Liverpool. If we look at his touch map, I think the most striking thing for this is the positions that he's getting himself into. If I just look here and these positions here, in that sort of inside left position, getting himself to the byline, one, two, three, four, seven in that area, in the penalty area. Interesting, isn't it, looking at that? There's more freedom in his play. I think Mikel's tweaked his position. He's allowing him to get forward. That's what he's all about. He's all about energy. He's got a good range of passes. He can burst forward. He can score a goal as well. Him and Thomas Partey have got a great yeah. blend in there at there the moment. Good balance, You've got it, yeah. Odegaard in there who plays as a 10. They can get the ball into him as well. I think he's taken the responsibility off him from playing the six because I don't think he's very responsible. No. I still make mistakes. We saw it in the North London derby when he gives away the yeah. penalty, when he tries to lay the ball back in, the, in his own. He, take that away from him by getting him higher up the field and you're going to get the best out of him. Yeah. That's exactly how he plays for the Swiss national side when he's at his best. And at the moment, we're seeing the best of him at Arsenal shirt. Let's have a, let's have a look at him in action then this weekend. Arsenal win the ball back. I'm just going to... I'll highlight him straight away. Here he is. This is him, middle of the pitch. And this is what you said about the licence to get forward. He get, yeah. he, he's, he's got freedom to get himself into the box now. But when he? he leaves there, normally in, 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 in years gone by, he would have vacated this area and they would have given the ball away and everyone says, well, why, why don't he just hold his position? Yeah. But because they're better in possession now, he's allowed to run with a bit more freedom yeah. and they're more expansive in their play. So he feels like he, he doesn't worry about them in possession yeah. anymore. See, so he's played and then follows his, follows his ball and gets himself into that position now. And there's the protection. So here he is picking that, we just showed it, in that inside left position. Yes, he's got the protection, he's right, he's safe with party, but get himself into, a, into an area where he can really hurt the opposition. Decent touch. Liverpool managed to clear on this occasion. He's but, got a good but, range. But time and, and time again. And fantastic energy, you know, and I think he's wasted in that sixth role. And not only that, I, I think he's a liability in the I sixth. think I think what's, what, what's interesting is the way that his game's developed. Because I, I would suggest that previously, if I look at the way Arsenal set up here, I would say that he often was in this position. So he would almost fill in on the left-hand side. They're a little bit unbalanced. So yeah. Tierney, generally, would be here. I think that would be Tierney. Yeah. So I'm going back to last season now. But now he's got... Wide players, a bit like Man City, I think a bit like Man City play. Stretching the pitch, making them as big as they big, big as possible, making the pitch as big as possible. There's your two wide bands, trying to stretch it as much as possible. He's almost, if you're talking about Man City and Mikel Arteta watching Pep and his coaching manual, I think he's become a bit like Gundogan mm -hmm. in the respect that he's got the licence to get himself into forward positions. But because of the way they're playing now, he's not having to do that left-sided position. I'm, don't, 
He's, having, he's got the ability to get into the box now as well. I actually think, I actually think they're playing very similar to, to the way Man City. Well, that, 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 that's an obvious pick-up. Obviously, Mikel's going to pick up whatever he can off Pep Guardiola. Obviously, different players, certainly when he first went there. Yeah. Now he's got the players more like what he wants, but he's playing with a back four there. There's the a moment. position they again. They stay where they are. And they protect with Partey in front, and they just let the rest of them up front, the offensive players who are playing with such confidence, just go and win them the game. Mm -hmm. and, and it's working for him at the moment, but he's a clever coach. You know, he's thinking about it all of the time. He can make subtle tweaks um, to his team, and he asks everyone to do what they're good at and not asking anyone to do what they're not very good at. Odegaard, for me, is, is the, the icing on the cake. I think he's got real ability, uh, great vision. Fantastic balance, and he helps. You awareness know, Jack, again. Jack pops awareness up in, again in all sorts of areas. There right? he is again in the box in that area that we just showed on the touch map. I mean, you're a, you as a midfield player along with me. You'd love to play in that position. Wouldn't Lovely, you? yeah. You know, you just give the freedom to do whatever you want to do. Partey fills in. You know, they've got protection of the of the four centre halves across the back. This is this is the penalty. So we can flip it again back to Liverpool. I think in terms of their defending a little bit. If, we, if I just take it back, they've, they've got about six or seven chances to clear it. And I think Jurgen Klopp said that, thought it was a soft penalty. But at the same time, ball comes forward. Here's number one. Can you head it? Can you clear it? Jesus does brilliantly. Backs in. Does superbly. Wins Arsenal possession. Second ball. But that's second ball. So they haven't picked up the second ball. They've lost the first one. They've lost the second ball. This is Liverpool's defensive now. Not tracking runners. Joe Gomez has done the same as Trent Alexander-Arnold for the first goal. Not seen it. Ball comes in. Now then, Thiago, can clear you clear it? it? Can you clear it? Doesn't play it on. So that's at least three or four chances now that they've already had to clear the ball. Can they get the shot away? Mikel Arteta's getting excited on the touchline. Make a block. Now can you clear it? This, Jesus does well, actually, just to get a foot in. This is the, this is the one, panic. isn't it? Yeah. Fabinho now under a little bit of pressure, but that clearance is really poor. Good block from Henderson. Not a lot he could do about that. Ball goes wide. Could you get there and stop the cross a bit quicker? This is Xhaka again in that position. And then the penalty decision. Goes to ground, doesn't he? Yeah. Gabriel Jesus. Now then, what do we think? Of the penalty decision? Well, we'll see it, We're gonna, we'll see it, we'll see it again. If we, let's, have a look at, let's have a look at the penalty. Yes, well, yes or no? I think it's a penalty. You think it's a penalty? I think do you? I think Thiago swipes at the ball. He makes no contact with the ball when he kicks the back of... Uh, Jesus is Hill. I think he's very clever. He gets his, makes sure he gets his foot just in front of the swipe there from Thiago, and he kicks him. He kicks him in the Achilles. There. I mean, I mean, uh, that's that's, a per that's the perfect view. Isn't it's it? soft, but he, he's waiting for the contact. As soon as he feels it, he goes to ground. I would be shouting at him to go to ground. I think as soon as he goes to ground, I think if the referee gives it on field, it's never going to be clever from found. Jesus. The Abs way he goes down, absolutely not very clever from Thiago, who's trying to get back minimal in a position, contact, in minimal a position contact. which he's not responsible. Is it enough to send him? Is it enough to send him to ground? I don't care. It's a penalty. I don't care if it's enough to send him to ground anyway, because he's made contact. I'm all for not staying on your feet if you haven't been touched. If you've been touched, go to ground. Unless he goes to ground, they do not give a penalty. So I think all the Arsenal fans around the world, and certainly Mikko Arteta and all the Arsenal players, are delighted that he went to ground there. Another and I would say continue doing that, because if he doesn't, I don't know why he's falling over Canate. He's kicked him. You yeah. can see that he's kicked him on the foot. He's got every. If I was, if it was the other way around, Jurgen Klopp and the Liverpool players and the Liverpool fans around the world would want a penalty. Well, the decision was given, and Arsenal win the game. 3-2 and, and they're back top of the table. So, pretty impressive start to the season from Mikel Arteta. Fantastic. Yeah, let's, let's get across to Leroy. I think Leroy... Yes, another fabulous win for Arsenal. But for Liverpool, they've now dropped 14 points this season and they are 14 points off the leaders as well. And we saw a different Liverpool yesterday, Michael, in terms of shape um, for the first time in the Premier League, a 4-2-3-1 from Jurgen Klopp. No Fabinho in the last mm. two games, including the Champions League. You've been having a look at the last two Premier League games to try and find out why. Yeah, well, before we go into to looking at their shape, let's have a look at Fabinho. And in his last game against, uh, against Brighton, he hasn't had the greatest of starts to his, to his season. OK, we, we highlight him here. Uh, in the normal position that, it, that, he, that he patrols. We'll just slow it down slightly. Um, and in this situation, I just feel that the normal Fabinho will be on the front foot. He'll either be winning that or he'll be backing off and making it different. But he's very, very passive. And actually, his man then runs around him and could have been the goal scorer, as it was. Trossard was there. But they were queuing up to score and Fabinho could have made a real difference there. Again, in possession... 
OK. It's, uh, you know, it, it's not, you wouldn't say, his, his major strength, but things like that, sloppy play like that, um, great in that he's looking forward to, to pass it early. But when you just look at the reaction of, of Jurgen Klopp and Fabinho at some point in this game, you can tell they're not happy with each other. Klopp's certainly not happy with the way he started the season, and there's a bit of a, you know, a bit of an argument, let's say, on the on the touchline. So, definitely not had the start to the season that he's he's wanted to, and consequently, Jurgen Klopp's not only changed the shape, but he's also left Fabinho out. And just on that, have you noticed watching from afar that that swarming, if you like, as you brilliantly describe it, that pressing, isn't as intense this season? Um. I haven't noticed it. Obviously, I haven't. I've been injured for, for the season. Yeah. I haven't noticed it firsthand. But I think they've evolved the way they've played. They're changing in terms of before it was two enforcers, Henderson and Fabinho. Um, but now it's Thiago. Teams are coming and they're they're sitting back. They're playing a low block. So Klopp feels he needs an extra centre midfielder. He needs extra creativity in Thiago. So I think they've evolved. They're not better or worse, but they've just evolved the way they play to counteract what teams are starting to, to, to do against Liverpool. He's a proper yeah. Everton player, isn't he? <laughs> Doesn't watch Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> One other point that I think, just before I play this on and, and make a couple more tactical points, is that Jordan Henderson in that sitting midfield, but some people will say, well, why didn't, if you, if you don't fancy Fabinho and his current uh, performances, why don't you just put Henderson in that position as a, a like for like? But what I do think is the form of Alexander Arnold and how much, how better he plays when, when uh, Henderson's on that right hand side to cover him probably has plenty to do uh, with Jurgen Klopp's thinking. So he went with the two in midfield. Now, we've just forwarded it on to the next ball. And I, just before I, I, uh, we talk further on that, the high line of Liverpool's often spoken about if Matip had been up there with Virgil van Dijk, then first of all, Arsenal would have been offside because this is the player that actually starts the move. Now, Thiago, we asked if he was going to make this move from here to here, and you can quite see, clearly see that he's, he's done that. Now, Henderson has got a big problem. Does he come over and cover? Um, because that's now a, a weak link in the team. And when we forward it, the ball goes out wide, just on side. And obviously Henderson now has got to come over to cover Thiago's player. Now they're in trouble because when we see an area at the top of the pitch, this is about to be really exploited. You know, they've almost got four against two in that si situation. And when Arsenal... Did you want to make... Yeah, it was there, fascinating just... there. If you just pause that there... Um, just pausing that there... Playing at Crystal Palace with Roy Hodgson, mm. if I can get, if this is the right thing, he used to say, we'll, we'll, we'll give them that. Let's stop it at Saul's. Van Dijk come over, left back come over, Henderson come over. If they get it and they switch it, then we'll deal with that when, when, it, when that time arrives. And nine times out of ten, you leave a snuff out the, the attack at Saul's, or when they do switch it, you have enough time to get bodies over. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and Liverpool do, do uh, get bodies over, but unfortunately, they're. they're outnumbered on the far side. It's very difficult for Trent Alexander-Arnold, I feel, on that side. Lots of people may want to point fingers, but it's, it is very difficult. The next clip, let's just forward it on. Um, so we've seen a negative, let's say, for, um, for playing that, that system. Here's the a, here's a positive. If we just forward it on slightly more. So what we've got here is the formation, uh, the back four, which is quite normal for Liverpool to play in, in that, that four. We've then got the two. So that's, that's pretty much what they wanted to do uh, throughout this game. Let's forward it, and now, all of a sudden, we, we get themselves into a position. Again, in the forward positions, we've got that player that sits in front of the two, and then you've got the three attacking players as well. So straight away, that's Liverpool's formation. And as a positive, you get players into attacking positions. Again, this is very frustrating as a winger. Um, nine times out of ten, Saka actually... Does it well, he's brave, he holds his round, he doesn't sit in, but nine times out of ten, when you've got the left back this high and wide, and you've got he's a striker today, but normally he's the winger who's inside, it forces Saka to have to drop back here. Mm. And that takes away all of the attacking ability, the attacking abilities of Saka. And I think it's clever the way Klopp plays. He plays high and wide, maybe not to score goals, but to stop um, the attacking threat of the opposition. Yeah, and if we just forward it slightly now, just keeping an eye on Jota in that position by the referee, all of a sudden he gets into that position whereby defender's got a problem, does he come out? He decides not to. If he does, 
then you've got runners in here, you've got runners in there. If he, you know, and if he stays back, then obviously that's the situation where we've got Jota now turning and facing, and all of a sudden you've got problems. And they have got problems because Saliba stays back, he takes one false step inside, and all of a sudden Firmino, Firmino makes a great run, great finish, and it's 1-1. So there's the positives. You get players in forward positions, you get them in the little pockets that, that Jurgen Klopp wants, but, of course, it comes with its negatives as well. Yeah, and on the subject of Fabinho, we've, we've dug out um, some very interesting numbers uh, here today when they've both started uh, in midfield for Liverpool. 24 games, they've won 19 of them. They've not lost a single Premier League game when Fabinho and Thiago have been together. What do you make of that? Well, what I make of it is, is Fabinho is... We looked at the list of, of Liverpool players um, yesterday and he is the one shining example of, of a player that has got everything. He's the right age, he's the right quality. 28, isn't he? Yeah, in terms of fitness, he's always fit and healthy. Uh, you look down the list of other players, you know, Naby Caters, Oxley Chamberlain, um, you know, injury prone maybe. You've, then you've got the likes of Milner and Henderson getting on in years. Then you go further down the list and you've got Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott. So what you're saying players. is he's he is got the a hope, right one. He's got a hope that Fabinho gets back to form and he's the linchpin in there. He's got to get back to form, otherwise that becomes a very weak area of their team. And I just think that you look at this... Um, this table here with Fabinho and Thiago, I think if you've got Henderson on the right-hand side as well, uh, then that is Jurgen Klopp's utopia. If everyone's fit, if everyone's playing well, then that's the three that he would go with. But at the moment, he's just got to try and find a way without certain yeah, bodies. I, I, I stayed quiet because I, I can't stand stats with no context. I, I can't possibly comment on them two as a midfield partnership without knowing who those 19 wins came against, who... <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? You're a man so, after my own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, you know, there will always be um, anomalies in, in stats. Yeah. Um, but 24 games uh, played, 19 wins, 5 draws. I mean, they're not playing mugs, are they? They're playing in the Premier League against decent teams week in, week out. And I think when he's fit, Fabinho in particular, then Liverpool are a different team, far more solid team.